It's my pleasure this morning to acknowledge all of you who have um, been a part of this service. Thank God that you are able to come and to share in this fashion. And i um, seeing some faces that have not been here for a little while. Have you noticed that Sister Antoinette is here? Sister Antoinette, welcome back. I see Brother Conroy, Brother Steve, um, Sister Tashoy's family is here. And we want to recognize you and welcome you. I give you one minute, starting now, to get up and to go greet somebody in one and a half minutes, okay? So starting right now, I'm not going to sing no greet nobody in Jesus' name. You want to get up and greet somebody? Go get up, yes. Some people take it long because 30 seconds are gone. All right, 10 seconds remaining. Sister Queenie. Good to see you. All those who were not here last week and you're here this week, so nice to have you. God bless you richly. All right, your time is up. Everybody, your time is up. There are some persons who are visiting with us for the first time. And I acknowledge you this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand as I call your name. We have Shan Smalling, Monique Taylor, Kahunda Farkison, Terry Ann Warren, Juliet Thompson, and Shanika Sims. Can I ask you to stand, please? Awesome. Can we put our hands together for them? So, 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 so nice. So nice to have you worshiping with us today. We trust that you are blessed and that you will come again once you have the, up, the chance to do so. We are delighted to have you. Church, can we give them some sugar now? One more time. All right, that never runs out. So when you have run out, you come back and we will give you some more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite you to pay attention to the announcements. Um, the funeral service for Sister Nikisha Brown's mother will be held on Thursday, May 2, at Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic. That's at 20 South Camp Road. It starts at 11, and interment is going to be at Meadow Rest. The Sister Nikisha Brown, one of our ushers, her mommy passed and will be buried on the 2nd of May. We continue to pray for those who ha are still grieving, Brother Andrew and all the rest of persons who have lost their loved ones whenever. Grieving for some people is quite long. Um, so we continue to pray for each other. We thank God that he still delivers, he still heals. Sister Tanisha Richards, we heard earlier this week, was scheduled to have surgery. She went into hospital to have surgery, but the Lord intervened. Hallelujah. And no surgery was needed. Amen. So we continue to pray for her healing. We pray for her that she indeed will experience the sovereignty of God in her life. Amen. Preteens, if you are 9 to 12 years old, I invite you to join us on Zoom this afternoon for Sunday school. 
And then at 7.30 on Zoom as well, we have our Bible study this evening. Come Tuesday, there's another opportunity. You know, thank God for Zoom. I was saying this morning, COVID did us good, at least one good, in that we discovered um, Zoom, some of us. And it has been working for us, right? So in the middle of the day, we can come together and pray together as a church. So this Tuesday at 12, join on Zoom for prayer. On Wednesday though, you can come right here face to face at 10 o'clock to have prayer meeting. I know it was announced that it would be zone fasting. It's not zone fasting this week because zone fasting is on a third Wednesday. This Wednesday is the second Wednesday of the month. So zone fasting is gonna be next week, Wednesday. However, this Wednesday, Right here at 10, we will have prayer and fasting. And then in the evening, the singles and couples will be having their meetings. There's no youth service on Friday. And on Saturday, being third Saturday, we will have prayer meeting at 6 o'clock on Zoom. All right? All of this is on your program. If you had a program, if you're in any of the WhatsApp groups in the church, it is posted in the community group so you can go and look at it again. Did you know that our pastor is a part of the public relations team? Yes. So he told you the other announcement this morning about the benefit concert. So I don't need to say it because he said it so well. Um, I don't know if the tickets are available yet. They are available, so I'm going to ask you to see Sister Dejeuner after church um, for your tickets. It's cost only $5,000, and it's towards a worthy cause, so let's remember that. If you, are, if you need to get in touch with the office, if you want to set an appointment to see our pastor, you want clarification on any of the services that are offered by the church, you may contact Sister Diane in the office. Monday to Thursday, and I give you the contact information. Our phone number is 876-648-9278. That's 648-9278. If you prefer to send an email, the email address is cogop.ohr at gmail.com. If you can't remember what it is, it is the name of the church, Church of God of Prophecy, the abbreviation, dot oh are like old hope road yes at gmail.com we also have a prayer team that is ready and waiting to pray with you they can be contacted at 876-334-3439 or you may send your request via email to prayer dot old hope road at gmail.com so as you go through this week let us remember the word to us today the Lord says it, just do it. You don't have to think about it too much. Lean not on your own understanding. All right? He says it, just do it. And as you leave today, if you would like some onions, there are some onions available at the back so we can share. Everybody get two, two, so it can stretch for all of us, right? God bless you. God bless you. Remember, he's way maker miracle worker promise keeper and mo so much more god bless you for this week it is yet another sunday for us to worship give god praise forget about ourselves and before we start the service let us just by the presence of the Lord, so I'm going to ask us to stand as we take some prayer courses to get ourselves in the mind for worship. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come and dwell right here.
Lord, we need your name. 
I'll pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love.
to come in, I'll invite you now to come and share your testimony as we remain with a powerful heart. because I know what God has done for me. When I am broken, I sing. When I am stressed, I sing. And that's where I find peace because I know that I serve a risen Christ who is able. A few years ago, I think it was 2014, I wrote a letter to God about some things that I wanted him to fix in my life. And oftentimes we go to God, we want this and we want that. But that letter was specific because I had a need for him to work on some things in my life. And over the years, I saw him being faithful. He responded not in writing, but in his actions. And one of the things that was in that letter was a debt that I had at the Student Loan Bureau. And last year, Persons who would have known I was unemployed for about 14 months. And it was hard, but it was good. Good in the sense that I learned to trust God when I was going through my valley. And I thank God for those who extended a hand of kindness to me and my family. And I ask the Lord today in your presence that he will return unto you, not a hundred, but a thousandfold, as you have blessed me. Amen. So, three weeks ago, we had rehearsal for the evening of excellence, and I shared a testimony about God's goodness in my life financially. And this was, trust me, when I tell you God is good, he's just good, and him can't do that and good, he's just good. <laughs> right, so, this is, this is a double testimony, but just understand where I'm coming from. So being unemployed and having to pay tuition of $300,000 every semester, you know that is not possible to man. But with God, all things are possible. So I joined a credit union, and they offer grants each, the beginning of each school year, each, semester, each September. And so I said to my daughter, um, you know, there's a grant being offered by the credit union. So I got the forms and I sent them to her. She filled them out, completed them. So they gave us a sum of money. That sum of money was used to hold a space at UTEC because every year you have to pay a, a, a sum of money to, it's like a commitment fee to say, yes, you're continuing studies, right? So that money was paid at Bill Express. She automatically was entered into a competition, and she won $200,000 towards her tuition from Grace Kennedy. So Grace Kennedy paid that. That's a testimony I shared at the rehearsal. Two weeks after, I got an email saying, Dear Mrs. Cowan, your account has been shortlisted for legal actions. You are required Sorry to pay. 900 and odd thousand dollars by March 31st. This was March 20th. Where me must get that from? So I responded and I said, please do not shortlist my account. I've been unemployed. I'm trying to get myself in order. You know, yeah, beg. No response. Then I got an email asking, may I have a contact number for you? I sent the contact number. Up to this day that I'm standing here, I'm waiting for that call. A week after the rehearsal, we had a women's empowerment seminar at Maxfield Avenue, 
Sister Melisha and I were there. In the middle <laughs> of that seminar, I decided to check my phone randomly. And here comes an email. Your account has been referred to the bad debt collection. Legal action will follow if you do not respond by April 4th. This I know, March 30th, <laughs> right? So I'm saying, okay, God. So I showed it to the sister Mel, and she said, come. She rubbed my leg, it is okay. So I said, okay. By this time, you know, the nerves start rock. And I'm thinking to myself, God, when did we get here? You know, intent on panic, but God is God. And then I remembered him saying to me, remember last year you came to me and you prayed and you said to me, please cancel all debts. Trust the process. I went outside, called my husband, and he's like, come, why are you panicking? Just, just, just be still. You know, I got upset because I was expecting him to respond in a more subtle way. Okay, calm, it's going to be okay. God don't always respond to us like that. It's either we have to wake up and deal with the situation or we're going to wallow in our pity, own self-pity. And God was saying, none of the self-pity, I am God. I still was not seeing that message with everything because I was still panicking. Nevertheless, I decided to call the number that was in the email. And the lady spoke to me so calmly, and she was like, you know, I wish there was something more that I could do. She was very empathetic. Hung up from her, you know, balling stocks. Can't go back in the seminar, because at this point, I'm like, Jesus Christ. When me I gonna find that now? Because at this point, I don't see a way out, but God did. So... I remember in the conversation that I had with my husband, he said to me, call Miss Thompson. Miss Thompson is my um, representative at the credit union. So I called her. She's like, Kami, you don't need to cry. It's okay. These things happen all the time. <laughs> right? And then she began to share a testimony about another person who went through the same experience that I was going through. And she said, it's okay. There's a solution for every problem. I mean, you know this as a child of God. But when the flesh take over sometimes and you're like, Lord, this is me alone now, you know. And I remember say, I have a risen king who is able to supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I'm just there thinking, how am I, Kame, going to do this? Because I thought in that moment that I was alone now. But then God was saying to me, he, he tried every way possible to get my attention to say it is well. So having spoken to her, she said to me, Kame, I'm going to send you some forms fill this out, do this, and by Tuesday, because Monday was Easter Monday, by Tuesday, the money will be in your account and you'll be fine. You just get rid of them. Just get rid of them. That's what she said. <laughs> right? She was very calm and nonchalant about it because I mean, in finance, you know what happens. She does this all the time. Still a panic, deep inside, even though I'm hearing all of these things, and I'm like, God. So I started to pace the parking lot, Maxville Avenue Church, I got a prophecy, pace in the parking lot, sun hot, but I was still pacing the parking lot and I'm crying. And in that moment, I said, God, God, you have to show up. You have to show up. You have to show up. But I ask him, you know, I tell me, I tell him, you have to show up because I need you. And there was a point when I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to go home. I'm going to cry it off. And then hopefully, remember, you know, it's like I was, I was deaf to everything that was said to me before. God has shown me the solution and I still wasn't hearing or seeing it. I was still saying to myself, but I'm not going to ball it off because there's no way I can do this, you know? But nevertheless, while I was there walking and talking to the Lord, I said, God, you have to give me peace because I know that you are able. And I went back to the seminar. Walked into the seminar and all I heard was, and when the problems are probleming, you have to trust God. I was like, problems probleming? I'm like, oh, light bulb went off. I'm like, thank you, Lord, that I didn't leave because I'm sure whatever it is that you wanted to give me in terms of substance, food, you know, encouragement, I'm going to get it now. And in that moment, I was saying, I thank you, Lord, that I did not leave. So on, Mon on Tuesday, on Monday, I, I, I was at peace. On Tuesday, filled out the forms, submitted what I needed to submit and thing. 
and by Tuesday afternoon, no later than 4 p.m., the money was in my account. Tried to make the payment, it bounced. I said, God, this is now the 2nd of April, and I have until the 4th of April. I'm going to show them that you are God. So you have to make this work. So, <laughs> yes. So I tried again, and I tried a lower figure, and it went through. And I tried it again. And another figure went through. So I sent an email to the lady, and I said to her, I've made this payment. She don't know, say, God's still working, you know. Because she had said to me during our conversation on Saturday, if you pay half, then I will negotiate for you and see if you can make a monthly payment after. But having spoken to the lady at the, the credit union, she said to me, don't make them fool you, <laughs> literally. Because they're going to keep adding interest and interest and interest and interest, and that is so true. Because as at April 1st, the figure had moved, Kameh did not know this. Remember, April 30th, it was 900 and something. April 1st, interest was added at 15%, yes, and it was over 1.1 million. So when I paid the money that I had gotten to pay, I said, but Jesus, where may I find the rest of this from? There was still a balance. And I said, no. So I started sending emails asking her, what's the balance? What's the balance? What's the balance? She took a week to respond to me. But in that moment, I was praying and I kept saying, God, it shall not be more than this. It shall not be more than this. It shall not be more than this. The current balance is 50,000 and change. And I give God thanks. I give God thanks because he has proven to me that he is faithful. And he reminded me about that letter because this was one of the things I listed in the letter. Among other things, I give God thanks because God is faithful. And I'm saying to those young persons, if you do not have to go to student loan, do not. Because every single month that you do not make a payment, interest is added. Student loan is good because it helps us. It helped me. But if you're not able to manage your finances properly, seek God first before you make a decision. I sought the Lord before I went to student loan. I did. And that is why I trusted him to take care of the situation. But in everything, go to the Lord. So when you hear me sing praises from a grateful heart, it's because I know that my God, our God, is able. Bless you. Hallelujah. Let's all stand for the scripture reading. So our scripture reading is taken from 1 Samuel 15, verses 1 to 24. 1 Samuel 15, verses 1 to 24. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telem, two hundred thousand numbered, sorry, two hundred thousand footmen and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye should 
kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people speared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, it repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king for he is turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And have brought Agag, the king of the Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. 24 and last. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. This is the word of the Lord. It is now time for the giving of our offering and tithes. So I invite the ushers just to be in position at this time.
Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank Almighty God that your people have given unto your ministry. And we pray, Almighty God, that even as some are given from their nothingness, that you will return it unto them two times, three times, four times, four. And they will lack nothing, for you will provide for us according to all your riches in glory. So we thank you, Almighty God, that we can give unto you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing as we enter into a time of worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just give him some praise from your lips. Thank you, Jesus. Let us forget about ourselves, forget about the plans that we have in the week, and let us take a hold of the moment of this service, what God is about to do through the songs, what, is, what God is about to do through our pastor, to grasp what the Lord wants for us to grasp for this Sunday. So let us just get our heart into a posture of worship. This is the end. This is the end. Your holy presence. This is the air I breathe. 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 Your holy presence. Your holy presence. Living in me. Oh, 
to pray, then just pray. Siku tabande lebesi. Nako ni bras takota. Meko shi siti basti kote. Lebe kota lebe siku. Bandu pasika tai. We don't have to sing another song. Just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Mako sika tai. Niku sika da basa. We're desperate for you. Yes. 
Put up! 
who is like your Lord in all the earth, much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Because Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Because Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Because Jesus, you're the cup Lift your voices. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Just begin to tell him your presence, your presence is here.
There is nothing like your presence, Lord. Nothing like your presence, Lord. Nothing like your presence. We desire your presence, Lord. We wait for you, Lord. We submit. We surrender to you, Lord. We surrender to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Sovereign God, there is a congregation here at 47G Old Oak Road. And we come today, Almighty God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are here with us. We thank you, Lord, that you are present. We thank you, Lord, that yokes are broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that shackles have fallen. We thank you, Lord, that chains are loose. We together confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we offer ourselves and we offer this time and this service to you, Lord. Do whatever you please, God. It's yours. It belongs to you, Lord. Do whatever you please with us, through us, in us. And let it be all for your glory and for your honor, we pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'd like to bring greetings to everyone here present this morning, those who are members here, those who are visiting with us. It's so nice to have you. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Last week, was a particularly difficult week for me. And I really want to thank those of you who would have prayed for me, those of you who would have called and sent a text encouragement Really want to thank you so much. As most of you would have been aware that last week, Monday, would have marked two years. And I was about to say anniversary. But I find it difficult to call it an anniversary. Um, but it would have marked two years since the passing of your pastor. Or um, I guess some of you will say the former pastor. Um, but while you say that, I will say it's the passing of my wife. And truthfully, truthfully, and it's an opinion really, she was the kindest, sweetest, strongest, most determined, most ambitious, most courageous, most sincere woman that I ever knew. In the In the first quarter of January 2022, right here in this local church, we had for our theme, Living by God's Word. Anybody remember that? So from January to March, the Lord spoke to us in diverse ways about living by God's words. 
On Sunday, March 27, 2022, it was the last Sunday in the quarter, first quarter of 2022. I preached from this pulpit right here. And I preached living by God's word. And the focus was just do it. One of the things that I recalled saying in that sermon, March 27th, 2022, I said that we have been through three months of the theory of living by God's word. And the Holy Spirit was saying to us, prepare for the practical. 27th of January 2022. About 12 days later, I was totally unaware that a practical had been prepared for me. I telling you, and you know how the other thing or the thing said, you know. That whilst I am telling you to prepare for the practical, there is about three or four fingers pointing back at me. And uh, my practical was to have come And presented me with an opportunity to live by God's word in a manner that I had never done before. I introduced the theme last week the sovereign God. And one thing that I recall saying last week, you remember Sister Karina? I recall saying that God does what he does when he wants it, how he wants it. And we have no prerogative in questioning him about what he does. You remember that? He is God. And he does what pleases him. He is God. And he's answerable to none of us. Having said that last week Sunday, by Monday, I came this close. To asking God, why? How come? What make? You could have did. Why you never? But I appreciate those of you who prayed for me. And God saw me through. 
I'd like to use this opportunity, though, to encourage you to remember Pastor Melonia War. I don't think any of you except me will ever understand the burden, the passion, the effort she gave to this local church. Forty seven G really was her life. And I use the opportunity to request your support for the foundation that she started. The Melonia War Shining Hope Foundation. There's going to be a benefit concert on May 5. And I really am encouraging you to support as best you can that concert which will be held in support to raise contribution for the foundation that she has started. Don't worry, I'm not going to cry up here today. I did, I did my crying last week when nobody was watching, so I get rid of all of it so I could come before you today. So don't worry about it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. As a matter of fact, um, I said that very thing to a friend of mine last week. I'm good. The person said, you must stop lying, you know, because you're not good. Um, so I said, okay, then I'm not good, but I shall be good. But I'm good. Trust me, I'm good. And I always remember the, who was it now? The, the, the woman whose son was dead. And when she was on her way to see Elijah, the servant was sent and said, is everything all right? And with a dead son, she said, all is well. All is good. I'm good. Really, I'm good. Let's now get to the subject, the sovereign God. And let us read the text for today, which is from St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. 
And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had done, and when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckon unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. Praise the Lord. For this quarter, we are looking at the theme, Obeying God. And for this month, we want to focus on the sovereign God. When we consider sovereign and the sovereign God, there are some things that we need to understand that the sovereign God, and to, to, to be able to relate and to apply the, 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 the sovereignty of God to our everyday life. So some of the things that we need to take into consideration in declaring that God is sovereign is the need for a greater understanding of what really does it mean to be sovereign. Sovereign means that God exercises supreme and complete control and authority over everything, every time. I want to say that again. To be sovereign, it means that God exercises complete authority over everything, every time. It means that he has control over the galaxies. He has control over the sun and the moon and the stars and all the planets. It means that he not only have, has control over these things, but he has control over the smallest atom. 
that exist. It means that there is not one single cell in your body or in anywhere that is not controlled by God. <laughs> it means if God is not or was not in control for a split second of time. If he had lost control at the blink of an eye, he would not be God. But he has control, complete control of everything Every minute, every second, all the time. And that's something that may be even difficult for humans, human minds to fathom. It means, therefore... That God doesn't try to do anything. That God doesn't go about trying to get things done. He has no need of trying or coaxing or begging or pleading to get things done. Because he is the sovereign God. And we sometimes believe that he's begging us to do things. You know, I came across a verse of scripture from Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. And I knew that verse all along, but since this week, I didn't realize that that verse comes right after I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And verse 3 says, don't think of yourself, and I paraphrase. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But to think soberly. <laughs> Instructive to us. We're not as important as we think. <laughs> not saying that you might not be important to people. But I think we need to get to reality. And recognize that God does not need us. He is sovereign God. And because some of the time we act as if, if we don't do things, then God is going to be worse off. If we don't respond and if we don't choose to serve him, he's going to be worse off. We need to understand that he is the sovereign God. He remains in control every time, all the time. And let's get it straight. We need him to live and move and have our being. He doesn't need us 
to be God. And I think we need to get that straight. Because sometimes we ride on a high horse and feel that we are all it. Because God has given us an opportunity and a privilege to serve him or, or we get an opportunity or a blessing to be bright and we think we are the important but God doesn't need us. God's sovereignty implies many attributes. But I just want to mention three right now. Because God is sovereign, it means that he is omniscient. It means that he knows every single thing. There is absolutely nothing in the past, in the present, or in the future that he doesn't know. He is omniscient. You see, all the things we're telling him in our prayers, and all the things we say, God, if you don't do this, this will happen. <laughs> you know, God, if you don't go help me, me going to death. You're giving in some information, right? <laughs> You're giving him some, some advice. He is omniscient. He knows everything. Hallelujah. And that is why he is God. There is not one single thing about you or me or anything in the universe that he doesn't know. He's also omnipotent. It means that he has all power in the world. Power to do and power to stop and power to go and power to cease. He is omnipotent. There is nothing that is impossible with God. The third thing that I want to mention about what is necessary to make him sovereign God is that He is what I call autonomous. By that I mean he acts independently of everything else. He doesn't need to ask anybody's opinion. He doesn't need to consult anybody. He doesn't need permission from anybody. He's free from all influence. He acts after his own will. So when we put just those three together, Is omniscient, knows everything, past, present, and future. Is omnipotent, ability to do any and everything. Is autonomy, means that he does everything independent of everything and everybody else. When we put that together, 
We get a God who is sovereign, who exists and consists by himself and is not dependent on any man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now that we have a glimpse of the sovereignty of God, I'd like for you to go to the text with me, St. Luke chapter 5, and I pray that God will give each of you a rhema word from this text. St. Luke chapter 5. St. Luke chapter 5, and here is something very profound, comes directly after chapter 4. And in chapter 4 is where Jesus had been preaching and teaching in Galilee, and they had brought to him a multitude of persons who were sick and lame and had all kinds of issues. And the scripture says that he healed them, everyone. That was St. Luke chapter 4. And having done that, he said to them, I must go and preach the gospel in other cities. And so he came to the sea of Gennesaret in Acts in St. Luke chapter 5. And when he got there, I believe it must have been that the news of what he did over there went ahead of him. And so by the time he got there, there was a great multitude of people people who had come to hear him and Luke present this with some great degree of details and I like that it says as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God he stood by the lake Genesaret That is another name, same name for the Sea of Galilee, or I believe also called Sea of Tiber Tiberias, or something like that. But It was not by coincidence that the God who controlled time and space showed up at the Sea of Gennesaret just about the same time that there were some very frustrated fishermen. And just when Jesus was getting ready to minister the word, to preach, he couldn't control the crowd because they were pressing in, pressing in on him. And so he needed an available vessel. Something that could allow him to move away from the crowd and still preach the word. The scripture tells us that there were two boats. But the boats were empty. Because the fishermen had gone out of the boat. And as we will see later on, 
they had gone out of the boat because they had gotten to a point in their life where their effort and their knowledge and their skill was becoming futile and they were in a place of great frustration. And so that which they had held on to and used for years to bring about their well-being, they had forsaken it. And it was now empty. Scripture shows that God does a great deal with emptiness, you know. We could relate several other passages in scriptures where God used emptiness. And, 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 and in this particular instant, it was out of being just frustrated. Their effort was Proven to be futile. So the scripture says, they had gone out of the boat. If they had not, let's say, things were working out for them. These are experienced fishermen. And things were working out for them. And they had gone to sea. They had cast their net. And they had taken in a nice draught of snapper and parrot and doctor. What would have been the situation? The situation would likely have been that the boat that Jesus needed to sit in and teach the people would have been filled with fishes. And therefore there would not have been an available vessel. But out of their frustration, it presented an opportunity for an empty vessel. A vessel to be available that God could use. I believe I'm talking to somebody. A sovereign God. It wasn't by chance they never caught nothing. Enough. It was because the sovereign God is in control of every situation, every circumstance, every time. And so they didn't catch anything because the sovereign God needed an empty boat. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody's going through something this morning. And you have come up empty. And it's not because God hates you. It's because God is working out his purposes in your life. He needs you, and he doesn't need you with your boat full of fishes. And so you have tried at this thing for so long. But you're still empty.
Hallelujah. So because they had failed at catching fish, there was an available vessel for Jesus to use. I admire them nonetheless because in the midst of tiredness and weariness and likely un being hungry and frustrated and miserable and just want cuss and go on bad. In the midst of all of that, when Jesus made the request, Jesus made the request and said to Peter, Peter, I need your boat. Move it out a little bit from the land so I can use it. What, what's, the, what's the likely response for somebody in that position? A stranger coming to you all night, hungry, tired, miserable, nothing from your effort. Eh? Me not have no time for you right now. Worse yet, Peter may have or may not have known or may have known that it was Jesus who just done heal all kind of, uh, 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 of sicknesses and, do, and, 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 and would have just finished doing all kinds of good for everybody else. And you could have Cause the fishes to come. And you didn't, but you still come in asking me to use my boat and not just use it, but to help you to get it out. But I like the fact that the scripture says that Peter complied. With Jesus' request. And he launched out, he, well, he thrust out the word used a little from the land. Up to this point, take note of the scripture. Peter wasn't promised anything in return, you know. It's not, lend me a boat, Peter. And when I don't use it, I'm going to give you some fish. <laughs> it was a request without any promise of any kind of reward. A request that was made from one who was in desperation, hungry and tired and weary. There are some of you here today in that position. And you're kind of waiting for a negotiation with God. You kind of want to negotiate to say, God, if I give you, what will I get? A matter of fact, you don't even want to say, what will I get? You are telling him what you need. If I give you, then you must give me. The job. The health. The money. Peter, in his frustration agreed and obeyed God's, Jesus' request without any promise of a reward. We're talking about obeying God. But Peter agreed. 
And then Jesus, Scripture tells us that Jesus went into the boat and he taught the people from Peter's boat. And it says, when he had finished, when he had finished teaching the people from Peter's boat, expecting Peter in his frustration to sit and wait until Jesus had done all that he needed to do. It's like, who was it? Elijah or Elisha? Elijah and the woman of Zarephath. You know that story? Elijah and the woman at Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17. Elisha said to the woman, uh, uh, do you bring, bring me a little water. And this was in a period of drought. Water was scarce. And Elijah said, bring me a little water. The woman turned to go get the little water. And Elisha said to her, while you are going, while you are going, bring me a piece of bread. <laughs> and the woman said, sir, as God liveth, I have nothing in the house save the last little bit of oil and wheat flour. And I am now, you see me out here because I have come out to gather some sticks. And I am going to light a fire and bake a cake. It's the last cake I'm going to bake. And then I'm going to eat. And my son and I will just lay down and die. And if you read that in, in 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16, Elijah made an unreasonable... If we think of it literally, we would need to assume that Elijah didn't hear what the woman said. Because Elijah, the, the woman explicitly said, I have enough for one cake. And that's it. Elijah said, go take that enough for one and bake me a cake first. And bring that to me. And after you have done my cake, then you go and bake one for you and your son. <laughs> I don't know much if I'm in somebody. An empty barrel is what God used to feed Elijah and the widow for years, for, for weeks and months. An empty boat was what God used to present the message of the kingdom of God. Hungry and frustrated. And tired and weary and fed up people with emptiness is a perfect combination when brought to Jesus Christ. And if that's you today, you're at the right place. Because that's exactly what God needs. Let me try and wrap this up. 
So Jesus sat in the boat, taught the people. And when he had finished teaching the people from Peter's boat, he turned to Peter and said, Peter, launch out in the deep. Let down your net and catch fish. Peter would have turned to him and said, this man mad. But you respect Master, same thing you, have, you are telling us to do is what we have done all night. And we have taken nothing, not even a sprat. Much more the snapper and the doctor and Welchman and the other things that we are used to getting right at this spot. And you are telling us to go back same place and do the same thing. But again, I like Peter. Peter said, Jamaican language. That no make no sense. Absolutely no sense. And this is what I want to leave with you. Obeying God. You see, where the rubber eats the road, it's not by getting up and say he's the sovereign God and he knows everything and he is in control of everything. That's not it. Where the rubber hits the road are where the tests of your belief of his sovereignty comes to bump is when you get an instruction from him that does not make any sense whatsoever, what do you do with it? When you hear his voice calling you and you know that this is not a convenient time, When you know what he's telling you to do, that match doesn't add up. It just doesn't make sense. It is in circumstances and these kinds of situations that you demonstrate whether you believe him to be sovereign or not. And this is where Peter, notwithstanding all his other weaknesses and ills, this is where Peter, notwithstanding his quick temper and willingness and readiness to cuss out and to do all kind of things, this is where Peter separated himself. Because he said these words. God, Jesus, where you say no make no sense at all. But just because I use so, I am prepared to do it. Just because it's you, I am prepared to do the foolishness. That's what demonstrates a belief that God is sovereign. All the other talk.
comes a little bit are nothing until the talk of his sovereignty is backed up by obedience. Obedience to whatever he says, whether it makes sense or not doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. How many persons today going through your own situation, your emptiness. But you are prepared to say, it doesn't make sense, Lord. I'm at a place of emptiness, frustration, a tired of trying and failing. But you are saying to me, Come, pray one more time, give one more time, send out one more application, make one more call, forgive one more time, help one more time. They might use you and abuse you, but help one more time. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. I'm giving an invitation today to anybody who is here and you feel you're at a place where Peter was. Things not working out. You're frustrated. You're just at the brink of giving up. I want to invite you to come to this altar today. There is a net breaking opportunity at this altar today. There's a net breaking opportunity at this altar for all those who will come who will be honest like Peter who will say God Peter was very frank and forthright. God, I have tried what you said all night. And I have taken nothing. But just because you said it, I will. There is somebody who needs to get that Peter spirit. And somebody who needs to say, God, I believe you caused me to be in church today for this word. Because like Peter, I am at a place of emptiness. I tired of trying. But just because you send this word today, we're about obeying God. Obeying God. That's what we are being called to do today. Obey God. In Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else that you seek after will become a net breaking miracle. That's what Peter did. In the midst of his frustration, he turned his boat over to Jesus. He obeyed the word of Jesus. And he came up with a mind-blowing, net-breaking, net-breaking miracle. Somebody today has that opportunity to experience a net breaking. My final appeal, and it is simple. If you know you have heard the voice of God today, calling you to come. I won't even say all the things. Simple. If there's a prompting, a calling, a pulling of the Holy Spirit in your heart to say, come to the altar. That's all. If you feel something saying, come to this altar, final call, come now. I believe it was a couple of weeks ago that Sister Tamika preached that your victory will be in your obedience. Peter's breakthrough, net breaking, was in his obedience. His willingness to simply do what God says even though it made absolutely no sense. Bow your heads please, everybody. Father, I have declared the word that you have given me for your people today. I thank you, Lord, that you have caused them to hear your word. And I thank you, Lord, that they have responded to the word. They have made the first step of obedience. Because like Peter who you asked to thrust out a little so that you may use his bow. They have at your bidding Lord taken the first step and they have come to this altar to receive from you they have come to this altar as a demonstration of a willingness to submit and to surrender to you I ask you my heavenly father that just as you spoke to Peter after he had given you his boat. You gave him specific instructions as to what needed to be done. 
to get a net breaking experience. I pray, Sovereign Lord, the God who is omnipotent and omniscient, you who knows every single one of the thoughts and concern of each of these persons, Lord, because there is nothing that goes without you knowing. You are the omniscient God. And I ask you, the all-knowing God, that in your grace and in your mercies and in your goodness, that you will speak individually to the situation and the circumstances. That, Lord, where there is that need to forgive, Yes, Lord, forgive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord is saying that your net-breaking experience is going to be whether or not you are willing to forgive. You are saying, yes, Lord, it's not me to do them anything. But he said, nonetheless, forgive. Yes, me forgive them already and them do it again. Forgive. Your forgiveness and willingness to forgive will be your breakthrough. Lord, I pray for those who have health situations and would have tried so many things. Like the woman with the issue of blood, rather than getting better, it seems to be getting worse. Great physician, balm in Gilead, Jehovah Rapha for your glory and your own name's sake. Kalabako shakababako to shakaba. Yes, Lord, as you said to your disciples, neither art this man sin nor his parent, but that the works of God might be made manifest. I pray that your work and your healing power be made manifest upon your people today. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for those women having challenges with their children. They have tried everything, but they come to you today, Heavenly Father the almighty and omnipotent God who rules in the hearts of men, who turn the hearts of men. I pray today for reconciliation, for peace. Lord, I pray for the marriage that is struggling. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are the restorer. Restore today. And God, according to the desire of each heart and the willingness to submit and surrender to you, let it be done in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I pray for those who have not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior. Lord, that although this is not the most convenient time, Lord, they will say, nevertheless, it's not a good time, Lord. All of this is happening and I need to go back to it. But God, just because you have called me today, I'm saying, yes, I'm accepting you as my Lord and Savior. And give unto them, like you did to Peter, a surprise. 
a net breaking surprise, Lord. A surprise calm when they return home. A surprise peace when they return home, God. Grant it now, Heavenly Father. Sovereign God, that's who you are. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just before you leave the altar, is there any who came to this altar, you weren't saved, you weren't a Christian, but you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, could you raise your hand, please? All right, I want to say to the rest of you, your victory, your deliverance will be in your obedience. Whatever he says to you, do it. And the victory shall be yours. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and he will add all things to you. Your circumstances, your emptiness right now is not without purpose. It's what God wants to use. God bless you. As we prepare to go, just want to tell us about our upcoming rally. The may the church praise the Lord. Uh uh. Our upcoming rally right here at Fort Seven G Olo Bro. Let me hear the church praise the Lord. Another time I will share a secret about the Fort Seven G church and rallies. So because of that, we're gonna need the support of our local church. Can I tell you that the other churches are coming for us? Amen. But those who go rally, I know they're coming for Fort 7G. Note it. That's the name of the Lord. So this year, our rally will be on a Sunday, August 11. So we want everybody to come in their Sunday best and their worship and also your contributions. That's the name of the Lord. That's the name of the Lord. I'm gonna ask you to stand with me as we bring our service to a close. For those of us who made ourselves available for being a counselor at the Fun in the Sun, there will be a debriefing on Thursday between the hours of 4 to 6 p.m. Um, by the Solarfield Chapel. I'm going to ask you to, you know, come to the debriefing. And also for anyone else who wants to be a counselor, and I would encourage every person on the evangelism team to be a part of this. It's a good training ground. I went to the training yesterday. It was awesome. Bless the name of the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he have done. God be the glory. Great things he has done.
Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.